tanking. It's a word with more baggage than a football team taking a month-long trip to Australia. And while it's often a punchline in the NBA, tanking in the NFL is a far more serious issue. So that brings us to the Miami Dolphins, a team in such a serious rebuild it makes you wonder if we should relegate them to the Canadian Football League. But the question we're trying to answer today is not about the advantages of promotion and relegation in American football, but rather about the ethics and the effectiveness of the Dolphins, uh, rebuild. Buckle up. So let me just say this right off the top. In a lot of my videos, I hope you've noticed so far that I like to integrate statistics and some other things like that. I like to make them numbers driven. This is not necessarily that video. It's early in the season and well, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Rather, I want to talk about two things. Is this rebuild effective? And is it ethical? Let's start with the first question, whether this rebuild is effective or not. Well, they've already given up several of their major pieces and declined trades for other pieces, Jadavion Clowney specifically. What they've gotten in return is a huge stockpile of draft picks. Rebuild 101 suggests that the more draft picks you have, the better your rebuild is going to go. And especially in the NFL, turnarounds can happen really fast with the right draft picks and the right support system in the front office of the team. Just look at the LA Rams, for example. But the question about what the Dolphins are actually doing with these picks hinges around one point. Who are they drafting with the number one overall pick? Assuming that they get it. I mean, we're going to make that assumption here. Well, conventional wisdom would tell you that it's going to be to a Tagovailoa from Alabama. But then why would the Dolphins trade for last year's number 10 overall pick, Josh Rosen? It would make you think that Rosen is going to be the quarterback of the future. Fitzpatrick starting now over Josh Rosen, even though reports came out of Dolphins camp all summer that Rosen had outperformed him, both in-game and in training camp. So it would make you think that they don't want to risk Josh Rosen and use Fitzpatrick now while they know that their team is going to be uh, poor, <laughs> we can say. But if their goal is to angle for Tua, why would they trade a second round pick for a backup quarterback? Unless they believe that that's all Josh Rosen is. But aren't there more valuable backup quarterbacks out there Guys that have been in the league for longer. I mean, Josh Rosen is 23 years old. This is his second year in the NFL, and he spent his first year behind one of the worst offensive lines in the history of football. So why would they be angling to draft another quarterback? My theory is that assuming that they do get the number one overall pick, they're going to essentially trade back out of it to a team that does need a quarterback and hopefully get a huge haul of picks. What they should be rooting for is for Tua to create some separation between him and the other quarterback that scouts consider to be in that top echelon, Justin Herbert from Oregon. If Tua creates separation between himself and Herbert, you're going to have a lot of teams that want to get up there for Tua, and you're looking at several first round picks in contention for the Miami Dolphins. I, I, I want to I want to take a quick aside here because I am a UCLA fan. I watched Josh Rosen in school. This dude, if that happens, will be the unluckiest quarterback in, in history that I can think of. You think about him getting drafted by the Cardinals, thinking that, okay, it's an okay situation, and then it's a coach who doesn't know what he's doing. He changes offensive coordinators during his rookie year, wasn't even supposed to start when he did because of an injury, and then he gets, and then everyone on his offensive line gets hurt, and then a bunch of the backups get hurt as well. And then after all that, they change coaches, the coach dumps and drafts a new quarterback. And then he goes to the Dolphins, and now you're looking at the Dolphins saying, okay, we think that you're going to be the quarterback of the future. But then if they fire the coach, new coach is going to come in, dump Josh Rosen, draft another quarterback. I mean, is there a dude that's been more unlucky? 
in, in the NFL that you can think of. I know it's not necessarily completely relevant to this video. I just want to put it out there because I'm disgusted by what's going on. So let's move on to maybe the bigger issue here. If the Dolphins truly are tanking, if they're really rebuilding, is it ethical to do that? Is it moral? We've had this discussion in the NBA a lot in the past few years. The NBA had to take action against teams potentially doing this back when they instituted the draft lottery so that no matter how hard you tank, you still might not get the number one overall pick. But the discussion around the morality of tanking in the NBA seemed to always center around the fans. Is it ethical to tank knowing that your fans are going to be buying tickets and not watching a team play to the best of their abilities or go out there trying to win games. That's a legitimate question because in today's day and age, fans are spending more and more money to go watch at the expense of better and better TVs, better viewing experiences when you're not there live. In the NFL though, the question to me actually is a lot different. It's less about the morality of showing up for the fans and more so about the morality of making players go out there and put their bodies on the line when you are not trying to win ball games. It's different than playing basketball. I'm not saying that basketball is 100% safe or it's not difficult or anything like that. But I'm saying that the injuries sustained while playing football, potentially career, potentially life-threatening at times. And you're telling guys, go out there and risk those types of injuries, but we're not really trying to win this game. So it doesn't really matter. So what are you doing it for? You're, you're doing it for a paycheck. Fine. But is it really ethical to tell guys to go out there and do that? These are tremendous athletes. If you were to say, you have to go out and do something for a paycheck this big, they could have played basketball. They could have played, I mean, any other sport they could have played. So yeah, they're making a paycheck doing it, but in, in most other jobs where you're making a paycheck, even if you don't necessarily believe in what you're doing, you're not putting your life on the line in most other jobs. No, no disrespect to, to people that work some really, really difficult jobs. If you are, let's say, an insurance broker and your firm is clearly angling to be sold to the highest bidder because you're losing management or, or whatever the case may be, you're not putting your life on the line by going out every day and selling insurance. But in, in football, you are doing that. So is it okay to tell players you, you have to do that? You have to go out there and do that or we're going to fine you. But also, we're not trying to win a football game right now. We are trying to lose as many football games as humanly possible. And you see that with the number of guys that have reportedly requested trades away from Miami and Micah Fitzpatrick just got one to the, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you clearly have a lot of players that don't believe that that is ethical, that is moral to ask them to do that. But from the Dolphins perspective, it, they're, they're a business, they are a business. and. In their business, you have to win in order to make more money, in order to be successful. And the best way to win is to get more young players and get a new crop of guys that can help you win football games in the future. So you can understand from the Dolphins perspective why they'd also be saying, look, we know there's no chance that we're making the playoffs right now the way that we're constructed. So we're just doing what's best for business, what's best for the future. So it comes down to the team doing what's best for itself versus players saying, is this best for my well-being? And where this comes down to, honestly, is for me personally, I don't think it's particularly ethical in football to tank the way that the Dolphins are doing it because of how dangerous, how physical the sport is by nature. But what do you do about teams trying to do it? There's no way you can prove that the Dolphins are intentionally tanking their season. All we have is, is circumstantial evidence and, and speculation, so we can't prove it. Do you institute a draft lottery? Well, 
How many examples can you think of of a team that is definitely openly tanking like the Dolphins appear to be doing this year? And by the way, I, I understand a lot of the guys out there, they're, they're trying to do their best. They're going out there and they're, they're trying to win football games. This, this isn't about that. This is more about the front office and the coaching staff making these decisions. But what do you do about it? If you institute a draft lottery, you're punishing teams that don't tank, that really are the worst team in the NFL, that need the pieces to rebuild, and you're punishing them because of what the Dolphins did. But if you find them, where's the line? How do you determine what real tanking is versus not? I don't know if there is a way to assess real tanking, quote unquote. If you live in Miami, I, I would say you could you could potentially make a difference to the Dolphins' bottom line by not going and, and watching their games, not attending their games in person. But I they're obviously anticipating that. They don't care. So the only way to do it is a long-term option where you don't go and watch their games in person when they're good, if they become good through all this, if they get great draft picks and become a better team, and you still don't go watch them, costing them money in the future, but then it still doesn't help the guys right now that are being thrown out there. It's, it's kind of a depressing way to end the video by saying it's not necessarily ethical, it's not particularly moral, what the Dolphins are doing, but there's still nothing we can do about it. It, it, it sucks. I don't want to end the video that way. So the only thing that I think is at least any kind of positive out of this is to say that if we get the conversation going, if more people are talking about this, maybe someone who's much smarter than I in the NFL can figure out a change to make stop this from happening. Hopefully stop it from happening now, but also stop it from happening to, to guys in the future. I don't think this is the way that teams should be approaching their rebuilds, the, the, the way the Dolphins are currently, I, I don't. So I hope that someone can be part of this conversation that we can start and figure out what to do about this and, and, and actually make some changes so that this doesn't happen. So I hope that this was at least helpful in that regard. I appreciate you guys listening. Subscribe for all of GA Sports content now and in the future. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time.